Hello and welcome back. We are in September and oh my goodness the manure production from that straw is through the roof. So bear in mind we took about probably two million litres of straw over the course of taking off our fields and taking off the extra field. So we were, you know, well off for straw anyway. The conversion rate is about a thousand litres of straw to three thousand of manure. So you can only imagine how much manure we have got. It's great. We are going to be selling some at the biogas plant. We're going to start off, I'm going to drop 100,000 litres down there. So I'm just on the first trip down. It's going to be a few trips, but uh, that will all be part of the fun. That will start us getting some money. We are also considering other options for what to do with the straw rather than just converting it to manure and we've got some potential ideas in the pipeline we might look at going down the route of solid fertilizer and using our manure because if we just convert all say a million and a half litres of straw straight to manure at the one to three conversion rate we're looking at four and a half million litres of manure and it will not take that to fertilise all our fields. We could fertilise the entire Calmston area and not need that much manure. So we are going to have a think about what to do with that. But we've got some work to do today. We've got some ploughing to do. So Robert is currently out ploughing some of the fields. Alex is then going to use the drill once I'm finished with this John Deere. Because I've got some new equipment to test. So that's going to be good fun. I'm going to be doing some equipment testing. While they are getting on with getting the fields prepped and ready for our final winter crops. Just back this in here. So as you can see, I've got a set of mowers. Now we're kind of we were looking at what the farm could invest in and at the moment they've only got that kind of small front mower and side mower set up. Which is great, don't get me wrong, it saw us through this year and it's seen the farm through many years in the past but just it was one of the things we were looking at efficiencies and we said do you know what that's actually one of the things that could be made more efficient is the mowing setup and moving to a triple mower setup as opposed to just the the two single mower setup that would be a way of increasing productivity on the farm. So we've got, we have actually sold the other mowers. There wasn't a mower that was kind of suitable as a for a triple setup on the back to just swap out and keep the same set. So the old mowers, the Feller set, have been sold. 
So we've got two sets of mowers on test. We have this one, which is the let's go in. It's the Kongskilda. It's as you can see, it's a trailed mower setup. We've got this on loan from the dealership as a, a test model. It's trailed, which gives us a bit more flexibility for getting into some of the more awkward fields. And that was one of my concerns, obviously, at the moment. The, uh, the single setup doesn't have, uh, you know, doesn't add very much onto the tractor. Triple mower setup adds quite a bit of length, and if you're trying to pivot the tractor into a tight field, I did wonder if this might be better. The disadvantage to this setup, however, is the cost. It is about three times more expensive. At the moment, it's not putting a swath out. The version that we've got here doesn't allow you to swath the grass. The, um, the John Deere mowers that we've got as the, the other side of the test also don't swath. We can have an option on here to swath, but it's another 20,000, something like that. Which, on top of the already, I think it's nearly 200,000 cost of this setup, seemed like a little bit too much for us. Um, I'm also running this with the Massey because these mowers require a little bit more power and actually the whole setup is more power than the 6250 has so um, that is also going to be a consideration the, the John Deere setup could be towed could be uh, run by the 6250 and probably the 6230 to push. So again, that's all going in the consideration. Okie dokie, there we go, there's Robert ploughing away, quite literally. Yeah, we're not in a massive rush to plant these, we've also got next month as well that we can still get the seed down in obviously it would be good to get it all done and put to bed as soon as possible in case of inclement weather and what have you but worst case scenario this will be fine right i blocked that front mower haven't i excellent right i'll um shuffle these around and uh, catch you in the field with the John Deere's. Okay, here's the first test for the John Deere's. Can I get them through this gate? snuck through so let's see how they mow obviously now all of the weight is on the tractor and the rear three point link So that has an impact on handling, but I am impressed how I managed it. Okay, it wasn't easy, but we did just about sneak it through that gate.
Okay, so my initial impressions from the John Deere setup are that there's still that kind of same little bits being left behind, so it's probably style of mowing rather than a particular floor with the mowers. Um, I would assume short of getting something like a Crone Big M it's going to be the same sort of issue so it will just have to be something we adapt to in our mowing style I guess um, yeah it's uh, putting it out pretty much the same as the uh, the Kong's Gilda is and uh, yeah the as I say the main difference is the weight of the uh, the mowers on the back of the tractor and them being on the three point rather than supported on trailer behind obviously we did manage to just about squeak it through this gate I will be bringing the Kongs Gilder ones down just to uh, compare and see how they do going through the gate and then we will head up to the other fields on the upper farm and we'll get those mown and uh, probably just with the Kongs Gilder I don't know we might might see if the uh, the John Deere is free and we can uh, run both sets at once and run the the John Deere set on the John Deere Okie dokie, so I've swapped over the mowers and it is time to see how well whoop, this is ominous. I was about to say it's time to see how well they fit in the narrow field, but oh dear, honestly, always in the way. Yeah, that swing there was um, slightly worrying. front get the front one in come on front one in right keep it over as far as we can to get the rear that's going to clip I can't get over this side ah the front mower's catching The ground's really uneven here, and the front mower's catching on that. <sighs> that was uh, that was actually more difficult to get in here than it was with the John Deere's. I think it's been running these mowers because they require so much power. It's burning through the methane much quicker than it normally would, which. Uh, it's probably a consideration as well, given that uh, I'll be limited to running it with the Massey if we do go for these as a long-term solution. Right, let's get on, get this moan, and I will I'll bring the John Deere over to do the sheep just to try that through these gates as well.
Okay, so as you can see, I have grabbed the John Deere mowers. I've got the 6230, just because I thought that would be quite a good test for them. They are meant to require a total 180 horsepower, no, 280 horsepower, and that is what this John Deere has. So we know the 6250R will run them with a little bit of power to spare. This is right on the line. The key thing I noticed on the way over and the difference to having these on the Massey is that it was a little bit kind of more prone to tipping I think is the way I would put it like the front axle was very light now that the rear mowers are down on the ground and completely flat it's not an issue in the slightest but it, it definitely felt a little bit funny on the steering axle when we were trying to like turn corners and that sort of thing didn't feel like we kind of had our full steering availability which is fine and you know we can work around that and again this was a test to see how this would cope with them and if that's the only issue is just the getting them to the fields well most of our fields are one on to the other anyway so uh, it's not that much of a job let's go round this sheep come back and get that bit in a minute this is the problem with mowing a field inhabited by sheep Right, yes I just thought I'd add that observation in, um, Alex is still chugging along with the contract, I mean it's, it's taking it, its time that contract so we might only get one of our fields planted today, Let's move around the sheep, ok nobody saw this, there we go, just for the sake of carrying on. So, yeah, we might only get one of the fields planted today, and it might be quite late. But we'll see, we'll keep going. I've got all this grass to collect anyway. And we might get some more muck thrown on some of the fields. We'll see. Oh, this sheep's been really really not behaving are they good morning it is October now we are at 8 o'clock quite early in the morning and as you can see trees are starting to turn we are very much in the run into winter um, I am just on the way down to the Cotswold store to sell all of the grape juice so this has been produced from basically all of the grapes that we have got um, that have come out of our two little grape greenhouses this is all of the grape juice that they have produced so far when converted in our factories so I'm running out of storage space in the the little pallet hall that we've got so uh, I'm bringing them down to get them sold basically and we will see how much money we make on that so this volume of grape juice um, coming from just a, a very small couple of uh, greenhouses of grapes and olives it's kind of made me think that it would be probably be quite profitable if we could own a local vineyard um, the sorts of things we could start producing from it so um, actually I was chatting with Robert and Julie and 
they quite like the idea of looking at that as well. So, we have agreed a potential business venture going forwards. Um, we're going to merge the two businesses. So, their farm business and my factories. Okay, so that sale has just sold for 68,000, which is a lot more than the cost of the two um, the two greenhouses that we put in, and actually has covered the cost of putting in one of the factories as well, which we were putting in anyway. So overall, I think like I think that's a very good venture to have gone down. So, yeah, Robert and Julie and I are now kind of partnering together in business, which is going to be great. Um, we have already pulled our cash resources together, and with the addition of that 68,000, our finances are currently sitting at 336,000, which might not sound that great for considering it's the two businesses joined together. But it's also worth considering that we have bought the mowers. We ended up buying the John Deere mowing set. Um, it was just the cost and cut wise things were very similar um, the trailed mowers didn't seem to give much more maneuverability um, so it just made sense to go for the set that was cheaper um, and also the farm's kind of running in a John Deere direction the other thing that we have done and why finances are quite so low especially considering we had a large payout from the manure that was sold at the biogas plant is we've bought this field this is field 10 on the map it's right neighboring to our fields so fields are just up through there there's a you can see the silo just in the distance now it's currently a grass field we will do a cut on it and then over winter we're going to plough the grass up we might yeah, we might leave it in over winter actually but basically ready for the next planting season we will plough this grass up and we are going to plant potatoes in there because the potatoes are going down incredibly well with in the productions factories they are producing both fries and kind of polished up potatoes and we think that is an excellent way to go for maximizing profit so at some point that will need to be mowed here are the mowers left there, the Kong's Guild ones have gone back. So, I'm going to go because I am due to meet up with Scott at the factories because he is going to help me with a big delivery because I've got too much to just be delivering on this one little trailer and as part of the kind of new enterprise he is coming to help out with that. Thank you so much for watching. Please do jump on the like button, share this video with your friends and get subscribed to the channel if you're not already subscribed. 
but most importantly of all, have a great day.